So a few weeks ago, I made a video on some of the biggest opportunities in commercial real estate in 2020. And one of those opportunities was opportunity zones. Now, since I've made that video, I've gotten quite a few questions on what an opportunity zone actually is. So I decided to make a video on it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about opportunity zones, what they are and how they're affecting commercial real estate. Now, if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate finance and financial modeling. So if you're looking to break into the industry or looking to advance your real estate investing career, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So opportunity zones are all the rage in commercial real estate today with more and more players getting into the space every single day. In fact, according to Novogratic data, nearly $4.5 billion was raised across over 365 opportunity funds as of December of 2019 with the intent to invest that capital in qualified opportunity zones. So with so much attention on opportunity zones right now, what are they and why are investors so bullish on the space? Well, first let's talk about what an opportunity zone actually is. So the IRS defines an opportunity zone as an economically distressed community where new investments under certain conditions may be eligible for preferential tax treatment. Now, opportunity zones were added to the tax code by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, and in short, were created to spur economic development in areas that needed it, specifically by providing tax incentives to investors for investing in those areas. Now, in order to get those tax incentives, what investors need to do is invest in what's called a qualified opportunity fund. And a qualified opportunity fund is a specific investment vehicle designed to invest specifically in opportunity zones across the United States. And once a fund is designated as a qualified opportunity fund, that fund needs to make over 90% of its investments in qualified opportunity zones. So for investors that are thinking about investing in a qualified opportunity fund, what are the tax advantages and what is everyone so excited about? Well, first, investing in a qualified opportunity fund can allow an investor to defer tax on any prior capital gains invested in a qualified opportunity fund until the earlier of the sale or exchange date of the investment in the qualified opportunity fund and December 31st, 2026. And what that means is that an investor could have a capital gain even from an investment outside of real estate and invest that capital gain in a qualified opportunity fund and be able to defer that capital gain tax. Now the deferral doesn't mean that you never have to pay taxes on that gain. So the way that qualified opportunity fund investments work is that if the qualified opportunity zone investment is held for longer than five years, there's a 10% exclusion of the deferred gain. So that means on a capital gain of $100,000 invested in a qualified opportunity fund, after five years, only $90,000 of that would be subject to capital gains tax. And if the investment in the qualified opportunity fund is held for greater than seven years, then that means that 15% of that capital gain would be excluded from capital gains tax, meaning that a $100,000 gain invested in a qualified opportunity fund at the end of seven years, only $85,000 of that $100,000 would be subject to capital gains tax. Now at the end of seven years, even if that investment is still in the qualified opportunity fund, that investor will still have to pay taxes on that $85,000 amount. But what might be the biggest incentive of them all is actually how that investment in the qualified opportunity fund is taxed once an investor sells their interest in the fund. So if that investor invested that full $100,000 capital gain in an opportunity fund and the investment in the opportunity fund is held for at least 10 years, opportunity zones call for an increase in basis of the qualified opportunity fund investment equal to its fair market value on the date that the qualified opportunity fund investment is sold or exchanged. So what that means for that investor is that even though they're going to have to pay capital gains on that $85,000, their $100,000 investment is going to grow tax-free. And if their share of that qualified opportunity fund sells for $200,000 in 10, 11, or 12 years, that $200,000 and that $100,000 capital gain is tax-free. Now on the property side, there are a few details and requirements that investors and operators need to make sure they get right. So first is that in order for a property to qualify within an opportunity zone, that property needs to be of original use or there needs to be substantial improvement to that property. 
Now, situations that would fall into original use would be ground up construction and development, but also properties that have been vacant for at least three years prior to the purchase or properties that were vacant at least one year before the opportunity zone was designated and remained vacant at purchase, those can qualify to meet the original use property test as well. All properties at a brownfield site as well, or a site that has the presence or potential presence of a hazardous substance would also qualify for original use, provided that improvements were made that meet basic health and safety standards. So if an existing property is acquired that doesn't meet those vacancy standards, an investor will need to substantially improve that property. And to qualify for substantial improvement of a property, an investor must double their adjusted basis in the property during any 30 month period they hold the property and the adjusted basis does not include the value of the land. So let's say you buy a property for $10 million and $6 million of that is allocated to the building value. Well, in that case, in order to qualify for substantial improvement, that investor would need to spend at least $6 million improving that property. Now, in either scenario, opportunity zones are really incentivizing investors to make huge improvements in areas that need it. So it's a win for the communities, a win for the operators, and a win for the investors with those tax incentives. And with how strong the economy has been over the last decade, many investors do have capital gains that they want to shield from capital gains tax, and investing in an opportunity zone is a great way to do that. So I hope that was helpful in understanding what opportunity zones are and why they're so popular today and creating so many opportunities in commercial real estate. So if you like this video and wanna see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.